Well, howdy guys and gals. It's me, George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man. And look at this mess. One of the disadvantages of working in a carport is that, uh, yeah, no matter how often you blow the uh, leaves out, they keep coming right back in. But today is the day I'm going to start my truck, Lord willing. So I've got to do a couple of last minute things and then we'll get right to it. Hold on to your hats because here we go. Go ahead. Okay, shut it off. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Cranking it up. Make a few adjustments, but we're on the go. <laughs> Same to you. I think what's happening is there it is, it died. I think what's happening is the fuel pump turns on initially. Now you listen real carefully. See if you hear, you hear the fuel pump, and now it'll start right up and it'll run for a little bit, but the fuel pump's not running again. So the problem is, and see my tachometer is not functioning. So the wiring that I have going to the tack port on the coil is not doing its job for some reason. Either the wires aren't hooked up properly, but I chose the wrong wires, or that I have a bad connection somehow which I can't imagine because all the joints are soldered that I hook together. So I've got to do some investigation. I do have a battery light on over there, though the uh, charging gauge, uh, charging gauge is not functioning. It's up at 14 and just staying there. It doesn't go up at all. And uh, so, I've got a, got a wiring issue somehow. So we're going to check into that. But she's running, as you can hear. Runs too well until it runs out of gas. That's running out of gas. So, I wanted to uh, point out a couple of things here. Um, I didn't do a video on the fuel lines, and you can see my fuel lines 
uh, come up from the back. This one here is the high pressure line and this one is the return line. And I couldn't make the um, I couldn't make the fittings on the bottom side of this where it bolts on to work with the AN fittings. And these lines here originally came up and over into the middle of the other intake. So I merely cut them back and then I uh, cleaned them up real well and I slid my braided lines on there. And as you can see, I've got three clamps on each one. And so far that seems to be doing the job. Um, I do have my, and those come down here, down underneath the radiator hose and they come down here to the fuel pressure regulator. So uh, this is my inlet side, the way I have it set up. This is the outlet side uh, going to the carburetor itself and then the one on the bottom down there, that's the return line. And this is the adjustment here and you're supposed to screw it out to lower the pressure and I had it screwed in quite a ways and still get nothing showing on the gauge and when I did that uh, because it had some pressure on it residual pressure from the initial crank up of the fuel pump it boiled it right out of the top of my carburetor the carburetor seems to be working well I did have a problem with a leak on here but that was a matter of putting a gasket on I don't think, oh, it looks like I might have a leak right here. Gonna have to replace these gaskets. Um, I had used the ones that were on it and that's probably not a good idea. So that's where we're at. Everything is working as it should, except for the wiring, for the fuel pump, and for the tack, and obviously, for my alternator. So I'm gonna to have to do some investigating and find out what plug should have been plugged in that's not now plugged in from the alternator. It has these wires right here, this plug, and I'll have to trace them down and find out where they go. And it's probably just a matter of uh, Excuse me, go in front of the light again. Probably just a matter of one of the wires that I have disconnected that needs to find a place to be connected. You know what I'm saying? Because I have a few that are just hanging out. Like there's one right back down in there. And who knows, that might just be, there's a couple of them. This is the one that went to the fuel injection unit here. See that? But I don't believe that had anything to do with the... Um, well, I don't know. I don't think it had anything to do with the fuel pump. Although it might. And there's also another one down underneath, down under here, I can see. So, I've got to do some more investigation. And, uh... Now that I have it actually running, I can do an overall video um, and tell you how the whole thing works. And I'll do a step-by-step -step for those interested in doing it and not interested in watching the whole series that I have done. And we'll figure out how to make it all work. And save somebody else going through the grief that I've gone through. Like I said when I started this project, I'm going to do it and for better or for worse. And so far it appears that my uh, gooseneck is holding okay. No leaks there. That's a good thing. So, I'll be back when we get it the bugs worked out. Doesn't surprise me that we got some bugs. Any kind of a project like this where you're doing something that is 
out of the ordinary and not just plain straightforward is always going to have some issues. And oh yeah, one of my subscribers was concerned that I was using a bungee cord for my return spring. Well, if you look down in there, I have a regular return spring on it now. The bungee cord was only temporary for testing purposes only, don't you know? So I wanted to give you a couple of tips to do with using AN fittings. You have to cut these, and before you cut them, these are the lines that came with my fuel pressure regulator. Uh, when you cut them, you need to wrap them at the point where you cut them. But after you cut them, before you install them into the sleeve, or install the sleeve onto the tubing, you want to take that tape off. Because if you don't, the tape makes it so that it will slide out. The tubing will slide out of your fitting. Now, when you, cut your, when you go to cut your braided steel line, you do not want to use a pair of these pliers, cutters, that are used for PVC pipe. It won't do the job. All it'll do is squish your tubing. And... You don't want to use a pair of bolt cutters. So all they'll do is squish your tubing. And you don't want to use a regular metal cutoff wheel. I guess there are some that are super skinny that are made for cutting this stuff, but I didn't have any. But here is what you do want to use right here. This is a pair of cable clamps. And you slide your tubing in there and you squeeze these puppies like that and it will cut them clean and like I said you have to wrap your uh, braided line with a piece of electrical tape or something of that sort but then take that piece off before you put your fitting on and you'll have good use of your AN fittings and your steel braided line Hope that helps somebody along the line. By the way, I bought this pair from uh, Home Depot. Good brand. It's a Klein tool, but you pay the price. Sometimes it's worthwhile paying the price. Till next time, this is George, the Shade Tree Fix It Man, saying thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, sharing, thumbs up, all them good things. Hope your projects are going well. Bye for now.